So let's draw out a little bit of an architecture diagram here. So we'll start out with the agent core. And underneath the agent core, we're going to have this core logic. Underneath that core logic, we're going to have memory and state. And underneath that, we're going to have uh, execution and tools. And so a few of the concerns that we have here, especially around the core logic, is you know we want to fortify this. Uh, we want to fortify the agent's reasoning and instruction handling capabilities to prevent manipulation. So you know this core logic is the brain of the agent. And so in order to provide that security, we want to have a couple key controls. We want to have prompt hardening, the system prompt hardening, hardening. We also want to make sure that we have clear delimiters and structures. So use structured formats to clearly separate instructions from uh, user provided data. So we'll say format. We also want to have explicit do's and do nots. And really, these are clearly defined permissible and forbidden actions uh, within the prompt. So things that the uh, core logic should never allow or things that they that it can allow. Be explicit about that. And then you want to have um, deny policies. So we'll just write deny. And uh, this, you know, goes into the design of the agent, uh, into the agent's core logic. And we want to deny any action not explicitly permitted. Um, and this establishes a default secure posture. So when we look at the memory state uh, or the memory in the state, you know, so this is uh, where we want to protect the agent's memory. And a few things that we can do here is make sure that we have um, memory secure design. And with the memory secure design, we want to architect the memory system to prevent things like cross session and cross uh, user data leakage. We want to ensure memory from one user session is never accessible uh, by another user's uh, session. We also want to make sure that our tried and true least privilege is always uh, in place here. So this uh, means that we should only grant the agent access to what it actually needs to perform its tasks and uh, no more than that. So it's the same thing we would do with user context in terms of making sure that there's a least privileged uh, access control in place. And this restricts that potential um, impact if the agent is actually compromised because it only has access to a, a small set of things. We also want to make sure that we have uh, sensitive data or PII uh, redaction uh, or protection. And so this means that we're implementing automated mechanisms to identify and scrub any kind of PII or sensitive data, uh, both from the inputs and the agent's uh, long-term memory. And then the last thing we'll look here as is the execution and tools. And we want to make sure that we have mandatory sandboxing. And this really makes sure that uh, all tools are executed and, and generated um, code is within a sandbox. And uh, this means that we're able to contain any kind of potential harm and prevent access to underlying host systems. The next thing is making sure that we have a separation of privilege. And we want to design the agent so that high privilege operations are handled by a separate uh, trusted process rather than the LLM's direct control. We want to have input, output, I.O., uh, validation, and sanitization. And uh, we want to treat all the outputs from the LLM as untrusted. Uh, likewise, from the user as well, we want to make sure that we uh, don't explicitly trust anything 
uh, coming from the user or the LLM. And that's going back to our AppSec roots or our, our software security roots. You know, we always want to make sure that we don't trust what comes from the end user, make sure it's validated and sanitized. We also want to make sure that we have AI guardrails. And these AI guardrails uh, implement external uh, guardrail models um, to inspect and filter both inputs and outputs from pilot policy violators. So we actually can layer in additional agents or additional LLMs to be able to uh, validate that the agent is acting within uh, the appropriate guardrails. And then the last thing I'll, I'll say here is, is a JSON uh, schema uh, validator and uh, call out um, JSON, but you know XML, um, Markdown, we want to make sure that any structured uh, type of data that uh, is being used, we want to in enforce strict data formats for those particular schemas. And that doesn't, again, just doesn't mean JSON, it also means XML and other ones. But this is for tool input and output to prevent any kind of malformed uh, data from causing any kind of unintended behavior. Once deployed, an agent doesn't operate in a vacuum. It becomes part of a dynamic ecosystem interacting with other agents, systems, and evolving threats. Securing this ecosystem requires continuous vigilance through robust multi-agent controls, operational resilience, and an adaptive threat posture. Let's talk about these three key areas. First is secure multi-agent orchestration. The objective here is to address the unique risks that emerge when multiple agents collaborate, communicate, and share resources. Key controls include secure agent-to-agent -agent communication, where you enforce authenticated and encrypted communication channels between all agents to prevent eavesdropping and impersonation. You also want to protect shared memory stores by implementing strict logical partitioning and access control for shared resources like vector databases. And you need distributed tool access controls, managing tool permissions centrally and ensuring that an agent's access rights are dynamically scoped based on its current task and identity. This directly counters sophisticated attacks where a compromised agent is used as a trusted insider to send fraudulent requests to other agents. Second is operational resilience and management. The objective is to ensure the system is manageable, resilient to failure, and can recover gracefully. Key controls include resilient rollback mechanisms where you maintain version models and deployment configurations to enable rapid, safe rollback. You also want token management and cost controls, continuously monitoring API token usage and cloud costs and implementing automated alerts and budget cutoffs, and maintain an AI bill of materials which is a comprehensive inventory of all AI components to manage supply chain risk. Third is continuous assurance and adaptive defense. The objective is to evolve from a static defense posture to a dynamic one that actively hunts for threats and adapts to the changing adversarial landscape. Key practices include continuous threat modeling with MITRE ATLAS, programmatic red teaming based on the OWASP Gen AI red teaming guide, and incident response planning with AI specific playbooks that account for unique failure modes like model poisoning or cascading failures.